Welcome to Marketing Monday Silence Brand Edition, where we talk about all of the stupidest social media posts in brand history. Okay, so I originally was going to talk about some of the saddest commercials of all time today, tear jerkers. But Burger King had other plans. This morning, Burger King UK, as you may have heard, women belong in the kitchen, full stop, end of tweet. 150,000 retweets. They followed it <laughs> with significantly less retweets. They followed it by saying, if they want to, of course. <laughs> That's why we're launching a new gender equality in cooking scholarship. <laughs> now those tweets got, you know, a few million impressions, a few thousand likes. This tweet got 100 million plus impressions, 150,000 retweets, and like all of the alt-right <laughs> rallying behind it. So I'm not so sure it worked out exactly as they wanted on International Women's Day. But the core problem that I see in this, that I see in a lot of marketing, is an attempt to be way too fucking clever. <laughs> it's like an idea that you think is cool in a boardroom. Oh, this is so fucking clever, dude. We'll hit them with the women belong in the kitchen and then twist it, we'll subvert it. And then the idea is that it hits the internet they, and then you've given the internet this screenshot. If you're like, you weigh 118 pounds soaking wet and there's a school bully and you're like, I'm gonna study judo and uh, Naruto run. And the bully's picking on you, you're like, all right, here we go. And then he just fucking decks you because he weighs 100 pounds more and he's twice as big. That's what the internet is. The internet is the bully and you are trying to do some kind of wordplay creativity. It doesn't work. The second thing is that there's some people saying, well, all press is good press. And obviously that is not true. People already knew what Burger King was. Burger King is a big multinational brand. You want to either stay level or increase your brand perception. This is terrible. People took this opportunity just to shit on Burger King's food, by the way. Uh, then, of course, they uh, followed it up with this. KFC Gaming followed up by saying, the best time to leak this post was immediately after posting it. The second best time is now. And Burger King responded by saying they doubled down. They said, why would we delete a tweet that's drawing attention? Three hours later, the tweet was deleted. <laughs> I was waiting today. I had a clock, dude. I knew the second this tweet went up, it's a matter of time. It's literally like Jack Bauer 24. This tweet will be deleted within the day. I know it because the second the news story gets big enough that an executive at Burger King hears about it, they get scared. <laughs> Boom, it's over. Shut it down, you get the call, dude. Unfortunately, you can't really delete all of the print ads you made for your clever campaign that are now rolled out in magazines across the country. I cannot believe they got this approved. I, <laughs> it's just, this is the worst part of it though. It's like once something's out on social, it's like property of the public. So you really have to, you have to err sometimes on being a little duller <laughs> because if you get too risque or flamboyant, the first reaction is often the permanent reaction. All right, so uh, this is again, comes from I think a deep lack of understanding of how social works how sort of the group think of it works and how the immediate nature of it works. So now I'm gonna go in, I think we covered Burger King's tweet. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I will say, so there was also the, um, there was two terrible tweets this week from brands. The second one was the TSM tweet. It was, a, it was making fun of suicide, super yikes, terrible tweet. I obviously think the tweet is obviously terrible. You should delete it. But I felt bad because, uh, the guy posted a tearful, heartfelt apology immediately, deleted it immediately, said he just didn't know. He thought the guy was walking away. People were calling for him to be fired. I, my general thought is that this is different from the BK tweet. The BK guys doubled down, thought they were being clever, <laughs> and, uh, and deserved to be all mocked. I think this one should just be deleted and moved on. That's my opinion. You can have your own. I just really doubt that the person that posted this, and he's a young guy, was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna make fun of suicide. <laughs> That's my thought, that's my take. But that means it's a very hot week for talking about brand fails. Around, I would say 2012, 2013 was the launch of Denny's Tumblr. Denny's Tumblr was just basically an offshoot project um, by one woman who worked at Denny's and wasn't being monitored that closely. 
Once people saw that was successful, all hell broke loose. <laughs> but that began an era of brand social. But as the years have gone on and we've all gotten a little more used to social and every brand has tried to do it, we've gotten a little more jaded. We've gotten a little bit more like, wow, this is super cringe and you're just trying to sell me stuff. And so I'm gonna go through a lot of the ways that I see brands fuck up on social. Cause again, mostly with social, it's an act to try and not fuck up. <laughs> So here's what you wanna to do to not fuck up. Step one is they don't know what the hashtag is before they post. So here's an example of DiGiorno's Pizza using the why I stayed, which is about domestic abuse, saying you had pizza. Who's not guilty about eating all the tasty treats they want? Casey Anthony was not guilty. That's what was trending when you used this. These are examples of, of social media managers not taking a look at what the hashtag is for. Sometimes they know what it's about and they don't care. Like in the example here, Kenneth Cole here, fashion brand, did know what hashtag Cairo was about. I think the Arab Spring riots. Rumor is they heard our new spring collection is now available online. God damn, they fucking knew and they thought this is a good ass tweet. But uh, the most common that I've seen from social media managers and teams is forgetting they're still logged into the brand account and thinking they're on their personal account. <laughs> StubHub tweeted, thank fuck it's Friday. Can't wait to get out of this stub sucking hellhole." He works at StubHub. <laughs> so again, before you tweet something really uh, political controversial, just make sure whose account you're on. It's really easy. This has happened to me at Twitch. So I was on my phone and it's really hard to tell unless you check the little tiny icon if I'm on the HROC account or I'm on the Twitch account. Thankfully, this is what a fucking virgin I was. I was so obsessed with Twitch and watching esports that my real account and the Twitch account were almost indistinguishable. So I would tweet like, oh, Melee tournament about to go live. And that's like basically what we would tweet on Twitch. <laughs> there was no difference. That's, it's the sad thing is I forgot what I was on and it didn't matter. Most brand fails, because those, those are the most common ones that I've seen. The less common ones are when brands try to be funny. Because generally, the first lens we look at when we see a post is who it came from. You can see the exact same post from two different people will get different amounts of uh, engagement, even if they both have no followers. An example tweet here that would be funny or relatable from maybe like basic white girl account, <laughs> but not funny from Chase Bank, a multi-billion dollar bank, is this one. Why is my balance so low? Bank account, make coffee at home. Bank account, eat food you already have in the fridge. Bank account, you don't need a cab, it's only three blocks. I guess we'll never know. I mean, it's not a great tweet, but the idea is like, okay, that would be fine if it wasn't from Chase fucking bank. A bank that basically milks people with absurdly disguised fees. Obviously from Chase Bank, this shit isn't fun. Okay, you just can't, you can't break that. Doesn't matter how funny it is, they have to know it. It's gotta be funny coming from you. An all time classic of bad brand Twitter is holidays. Most specifically, as a marketer that loves seeing terrible brand tweets, I look forward to seeing the one or two brands every year that think they can make a 9-11 post work because it never seems to dry up. We have build a bear fucking workshop, putting a bear in camo and tweeting, we will never forget. CVS Pharmacy, you know, tried to keep it as basic as possible, but they thought we gotta add the CVS logo here. <laughs> Hold, don't post that. Wait, just quickly make sure we add the logo to that image. We don't want people ripping that off from us. Uh, I guess my one piece of advice to social media managers out there would be, you don't need a 9-11 post <laughs> ever. <laughs> it's super simple. <laughs> this one, I, I need a, I need a better, it's a tough one to explain. You know, it's, it was just 2013, so it's early days of social. So here's what happened. Originally, a pastor came into an Applebee's and instead of tipping his waitress after a meal, he had a pretty large group, he wrote, I only tip God 10%, why would I tip you 15? <laughs> now that waitress, understandably, was a little bit pissed. She took a picture of it and tweeted it. And people, they started roasting this guy and then in response, Applebee's fired the server. 
So right in the middle of everyone roasting this guy, Applebee said, let's get involved and make them hate us more. <laughs> now, obviously, people got really upset. So they doubled down. They wrote fucking novels about how, hey, look, they have guidelines and like you cannot show anything that gives away a customer's name. Except <laughs> the internet undefeated found like a post from a few days ago where you posted a nice message with a customer's name. <laughs> awesome job, Mike Henning. So the lesson sort of from this one, everything you've ever done, the internet will find. There are no secrets. So don't lie. <laughs> Uh, this is one that I've uh, noticed happen again and again. Never, ever, ever do anything at all that involves AI or fan submissions, ever. <laughs> because you get this, I had to censor these because they're fucking disgusting. But an example is that these are AI, or I'm sorry, fan submitted Adidas jerseys that say terrible things about the Holocaust, racist shit, and these are all coming from Adidas's account. So literally, it's the it's the fucking Adidas account tweeting user generated fucking things over and over. Terrible. So what you want to do is not do auto generated AI shit. It never works. Never. We've talked about examples before. Just don't do it. It never works. Now, the final thing I want to talk about in my presentation was about <laughs> the recent trend has been to be really, really personified to try and seem like you're as relatable you know just what up fellow kids the prime example of that is sunny d tweeting i can't do this anymore <laughs> to sell fucking orange sugar water dude <laughs> this to me one of the worst brand tweets of all time this was this did take place at the end of a super bowl live tweet but <laughs> The way they responded <laughs> did not lean into that. <laughs> Pop-Tarts said, hey, Sonny, can I please offer you a hug? We're going to get through this together, my friend. <laughs> By the way, one thing I fucking hate about any brand tweet that gets replies or responses or retweets is that every other brand goes, oh, fuck, this is our shot. <laughs> But Sonny D did themselves no favors with the Super Bowl story by responding to Moon Pie. What's going on, Sonny? Mood last night. All good, MP. Thanks for checking in. I love you. <laughs> Fuck off! You're not real people! I hate to be that guy. However, these Twitter accounts have no other purpose than to sell us products. They're using depression to sell you a product, which is, to put it lightly, pretty irresponsible. This guy's nicer than I was. <laughs> because at the time, I said... Brands feigning suicidal thoughts to more relatably sell sugary and oily products is pretty dystopian. <laughs> but I, that guy's a little more uh, nice than I was. So if you are a brand, you need to recognize that we're all aware that you're an employee. This is all a scheme to make money. <laughs> At the end of the day, you only exist to sell more of a product. And we understand that. And the more clearly you understand that, I think the better your social can be. People are not opposed to brands on principle. If you are aware and honest that you're trying to sell something, people are generally either ignore it or they're receptive. It's only when you get slimy with it <laughs> that people really start to get angry. That was the end of my presentation. And I thought those were all pretty funny, but I want to take a look at some of yours. Is this, this was an email. <laughs> this is unfortunate because you have to schedule these emails well ahead to get everything <laughs> ready. But congrats, you survived the Boston Marathon after the explosion that they sent to every Adidas person that went is insane. <laughs> I just, I, one of the first jobs I had at Twitch was managing the email as before I worked, when I worked on social. It's a miserable, thankless job. Corporate emails are the worst. So it's a miserable job. I remember, uh, <laughs> this is a true story. Uh, if Ben SW is in my chat, he'll tell you. I once was working late on one of these emails and I had to write the emails too. I had to write them, get them approved by like all these different teams and then set up the sending. It was, it was really terrible. It's a, it was not a fun job. And I was tired and I was putting this together. And I remember you have to make the email subject header before you write it. And it's like on a separate page in MailChimp. And so like, I didn't know what I was writing about yet. So I just put SDFG. Like I literally just spammed my keyboard. And then I wrote the whole tweet and then it was late. Did he put the image here earlier? Wait. <laughs> he has the image you fucker you kept this and we sent 8 million people just a message that said fcfg 
He hasn't even worked at Twitch in fucking three years and he kept his fucking tweet. His, fuck you, Ben. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I sent this tweet to 8 million people. Thank God they didn't just fucking fire me. This is like, this is early on too. I had to write about League of Legends World. I mean, it was a pain. You have that email in your inbox? That's so funny. <laughs> it, it really was just a terrible experience. That being said, this was my fault. SDFG in history, dude. Never forget. That's it! Marketing Monday, silence brand. Drakes, if you enjoyed. If you enjoyed this Marketing Monday, and if you do like it, maybe drop a subscribe. Consider it. That's all I ask, consider it.